Do we have a top six football team in this town? Let's talk about it. And a little Broderick Martin discussion as well. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And it's another week, everybody, of Locked On Lions on the Locked On Podcast Network. What's happening, everybody? Matt Derry with you on this a Monday, May the 8th, and a Tuesday, May 9th. Thanks for making us your first listen, checking us out wherever you get your podcasts. Most importantly, those of you watching on the Locked On Lions YouTube channel, it's free to watch and subscribe. Please do that. Coming up on the show today, Peter King, Football Morning in America, column today. How about this? He's got the Lions in the top six in his power rankings heading into the offseason here where, well, heading into the season here where the offseason sort of done in terms of free agency and the draft. We will dissect that coming up momentarily on the program as well. we got to talk about the schedule. It's not out. And there's a theory by King as to why uh, they haven't announced when they're going to announce the 2023 schedule yet. We'll get into that as well. Also, the Lions took a flyer on a big defensive tackle in the third round. And not one, not two, but three media outlets have ripped the pick. I was reading this today, and I figured I would get this to you. We'll get into that coming up momentarily as well. Talk a little Broderick Martin. You can follow us on Twitter, at Derry Speaks, D-E-R-Y Speaks, at Locked On Lions on Twitter, the Matt Derry Facebook fan page, and as always, checking us out as well on the Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Shout out to our everydayers, folks that are with us each and every day watching Monday through Friday. We appreciate that. We're listening whether it's Jim Correo, Josh Sanders, Joe Raymond, uh, Daniel Torres, and others. Thanks to those everydayers. Love you guys. Checking us out each and every day here on Locked on Lions. Um, yeah, got a little dressed up for the show today. No, I was actually at this Oakland County event today for uh, um, sort of the economic forecast for the county. Things are looking up in Oakland County. Um, but it was there to network and meet some great people today. So shout out to... Uh, to Dave Coulter and the crew. Um, all right, where do we begin? I, you know, anytime like a Albert Breer or a Peter King or a Rappaport or Schefter, they, some of these guys put out some of these pieces, and I immediately get bombarded. But my man, Nathan Litke, who's he's an everyday, or I call him the executive producer, he immediately sends me these articles. Just uh, And I appreciate anybody uh, that, that if you have anything that you find on the Internet or that you want me to talk about, feel free to send it. Uh, Nathan sent me the piece today from Peter King off season, uh, early assessment and, uh, opinions on ranking teams, Peter King, football morning in America, uh, football, football morning in America, pro football talk.com. Uh, he's got the Eagles can't find a weakness. Philadelphia. Number one, Super Bowl vibes teams. Number two, Kansas city, three, Cincinnati, four, four, San Francisco and five Buffalo. Next sort of group of five teams called They're on the Border. Number six, Detroit. Seven, Baltimore. Eight, Miami, which I think is high for them. Nine, Jets. And ten, Dallas. So the only NFC teams that King has ahead of the Leos are the Eagles and the Niners. When he says they're on the border at six, King writes, quote, Loved them with their eight and two record after Halloween. I still find myself smitten with the Lions, but curious move this offseason. The Lions took what wasn't broken and tried to fix it. Jamal Williams, DeAndre Swift last year, 1,608 rushing yards, 4.5 per rush, 22 rushing touchdowns. Now both are gone. That's pressure on Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery, particularly when the head coach is a big-time running guy. So there, there's your top 10. Philly, Casey, Cincy, San Fran, Buffalo, Detroit. Baltimore, Miami, the Jets, and Dallas. As far as in the division, Minnesota checks in at 14, Green Bay at 21, and the Bears, ooh, 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 Justin Fields, ooh, Hall of Fields, ooh, 29. So back to reality. If I read, seriously, my guy, uh, uh, Mike Vanderpool on Twitter, um, Heart of a Lions fan video uh, movie is amazing. Mike did it. He, he's as sick as the Bears on Twitter as I am. 
I shouldn't be on Twitter so much, but you know what I mean. But there you go. The Detroit. Let me react to this for a second. Top six team in the NFL? Like if the Lions played the Ravens right now in a neutral field, would the Lions beat Baltimore? The Lions never beat Baltimore. The Lions beat Miami? No, they didn't last year. That was at Ford Field. The Lions beat the Jets? They did last year. Would the Lions beat the Cowboys? They didn't last year. Giants, they did. Seattle, they didn't. I mean, Jacksonville, they handled. It's it's interesting. You look at some of these teams, and you have, they have a lot of questions. You know, like Pittsburgh for years, always knew Steelers were a playoff team. But they come in like 16. Chargers, always gag. Tennessee, are they that good? Cleveland. Like, the NFC is terrible. Like, toward the bottom of this list, from Peter King, it's like all NFC teams. Green Bay 21, Atlanta 22, New Orleans 25, Carolina 20, New Orleans 24, Carolina 25, Washington 27, Rams 28, Bears 29, Tampa 31, Arizona 32. That's the thing. Like, we sit here and say, well, wait a minute. The Lions shouldn't be a top six team. They're not this good yet. They, they went from three wins to nine, and it's cute, but oh, they'll come back to real. No, the NFC's really bad. And that's where the Lions reside. Certainly, they play a majority of NFC teams. They'll play their share of AFC, but you know what I mean. Like the way this shakes out, the Lions should win the division. Top six team in the league? I mean, you know, Baltimore's so sound. Now Lamar Jackson's back. Are they better than the Ravens? I don't think they are. You know, if, they, if you get into a close game and they've got, they've got the best kicker, Justin Tucker, in the history of the game. We've got Michael Badgley and maybe an XFL guy. Like, there's little things that I still doubt about this football team. Am I excited about them? Of course I am. And they reside in the NFC, where quite honestly... You know, in the in his top ten, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six of the ten teams are in the AFC. Of his top ten are from the AFC. 49ers, uh, Eagles, Lions, and Cowboys. League is down. Like uh, Seattle is at twelve. Seattle, you know, the Lions could not stop the Seahawks last year. Now, the Lions, is the Lions defense this year better than last year? Of course it is. Oh my gosh, the secondary is remade. It's beautiful. There's a ton of depth back there now. Now you're talking about Aiden Hutchinson in year two. You're talking about James Houston now having a full season. Like Josh Pascal is healthy. Knock on wood. Like there's a lot to like about where we're at right now. Sixth best team in the league. That is a big credit to Sheila Hamp, Brad Holmes, and Dan Campbell. They're going for it. They're feeling it. They've added to this roster. They've made good moves. Um, and they're in a position now to win a lot of football games. And I will be interested in seeing what the schedule looks like uh, when it comes out. I want to uh, talk about that coming up uh, momentarily here on Lockdown Lions. First, though, looking for a delicious snack, but don't want all the sugar and the calories? Then you need the best tasting protein bar ever built, and that is Built Bar. Got to try it. If you're like me, you want to make healthier snack options and choices, but you don't want all the compromise on taste. That's why you have to try Built Bars and Built Puffs. Built Bars are healthy. They taste great. And they taste so amazing, you won't think they're good for you. But you got to try them, all right? What makes Built Bars so good, they're 100% covered in real dark chocolate. That's right. Real chocolate. It's really good. Great flavors, too. Churro, peanut butter, brownie, my personal favorite. You know it. Cookies and cream. Now you can get Built Bars at Walmart. Get a four-bar box of the cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puff. Or go to Sam's Club. I was just at Sam's Club the other day on Hall Road. Grab that 13-bar box of the brownie batter puff and the churro puffs. It's great. You get it right there at Sam's Club. It's awesome. Or want to order online, you can do that. At built, uh, Built.com, you get 15% off your order when you use the promo code uh, locked 15. That's L O C K E D 15. They're the best folks built bar. All right. So we were supposed to know pretty soon the announcement of the date of when the NFL schedule was going to be released. There was some talk that it was going to be this Thursday. Um, and that's not going to happen. 
More from Peter King today about it. And the one thing that I thought stood out about the schedule was he says, King is reporting that it used to be that the road team would pick what network that they were on. And most times uh, the NFC teams wanted to be on Fox. The AFC teams were on CBS. And that's the way it's always gone. This year, all of that is thrown out the window. There's going to be bidding for the best games. So let's say uh, Kansas City is going to play the Packers, which they are. All right. I don't even know why I picked that game. Oh, Kansas City is going to be playing Buffalo. Fox is going to want that game. It's not just an AFC exclusive on CBS anymore. So this schedule is going to take longer because these networks are going to vie for the big games. All right. Lions Chiefs is going to be a big game. Kansas City hosting Detroit. You don't think CBS doesn't want that game too? Of course they do. Um, you know, I'm hopeful Lions Bears is in week one. Let's just get that over with and beat the snot out of Chicago. I think that would be uh, fantastic. I would love that. But these big games, you know, Buffalo and the Dolphins, Fox might want it. So now it's wide open. It's a, it's a cavalcade of opportunities between Amazon, Fox, CBS, NBC, and, of course, ESPN for Monday Night Football. So this could take a second here, which I found very, very interesting because I'm old school. I'm like a lot of you guys. Like, I want to see, I'm used to AFC on CBS. Back in the day, remember, AFC was on. Remember back in the day, AFC was on NBC. Cricky and Trumpy would do the big AFC game, or Charlie Jones. Charlie Jones, touchdown. Love that guy. Dick Enberg, Merlin Olson, AFC on NBC, NFC on CBS with Summerall and Madden. Those were the good old days, man. But now, over the last few years, we've just been used to Fox having the NFC games and CBS having the AFC, and that is not the case. Um, so it's pretty wide open. So this could take a little bit of time with schedule maker Roger Goodell figuring out the best matchups. They do a great job every year. We get it. My biggest hope this year is that the Lions start playing some games at 4 o'clock or in primetime. I'm not saying the Lions are going to be on primetime six times. I see some some articles. The Lions are going to play six primetime games. No, they're not. Lions are definitely a little Hollywood now. People are enjoying the Dan Campbell experience. The one primetime game they played last year to end the season on NBC, Sunday Night Football in Week 18. They did great. They really did. They showed out. They were fun, exciting. But six primetime games, I'm not holding my breath on that. But uh, Lions better get a Monday night game at home or a Sunday night game at home. Ford Field, under the lights, all day of partying. That better happen. Got to give the Lions a Monday night game at home or a Sunday night game at home. Please. Don't, don't give me this Thursday night Amazon crap. All right? Put the Lions on Sunday night or Monday night. At least one at home. The two, One of the two big ones. Where we get Joe Buck in here or we get Mike Tirico in here. Mike can drive 45 minutes down the nine foe to go to the game. All right. Um, many draft experts and publications are ripping one of the Lions picks. We will tell you about it. And we will do that coming up next. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. Thanks to the everydayers out there as well. And by the way, just found out the uh, Lockdown Podcast Network, Lockdown Lions. We are now uh, have a partnership with Sirius XM Radio, which is awesome. I'm a big Sirius XM guy. Um, I listen to, you know, Channel 158 every morning, the DA show on CBS Sports Radio. That's my morning drive show. I really like that show. Shout out to Mraz. Um, and I just love the music channels and the sports and everything else. So that is that is awesome. Love that. All right, so I was reading up about the big defensive tackle that the Lions took in the third round with pick number 96, Broderick Martin from Western Kentucky. And I uh, was reading a lot about Broderick Martin, and I just happened to be stumble upon the sporting news, pro football focus, and fan-sided, all ripping the pick. <laughs> Now, again, I mean, some of you wanted the big guy, Ika, 
The D, big D tackle from Baylor that went two picks after can understand that. That kid played against better competition and had better had a better grade, I guess, if you want to go by PFF and rankings and boards. Broderick Martin's a big guy. He's like 6'5", 350. He's a space eater. As Jim Nagy told us last Friday, he's a two-down defensive tackle. But Broderick Martin, according to the Sporting News, was one of the top 10 worst value picks in the entire draft. Now, they also put Jack Campbell and Jameer Gibbs on that list and said they're not picking on the Lions, so whatever. But I think Jameer Gibbs is going to be really good. And I think Jack Campbell is going to be fine. Broderick Martin, I don't know. But according to Sporting News, Martin was one of the worst value picks because on their big board, he ranked 235th. And he got drafted 96th. So sporting news, uh, not liking the pick of Broderick Martin, the big D tackle. So then I go on PFF and I'm reading about Broderick Martin. And then it says the biggest bus or biggest reaches on day two. And I'm like, here we go. Broderick Martin ranked 163rd on PFF's big board. Drafted 96th. <laughs> Does anybody like this kid? It's obvious Brad Holmes does. He played in the East-West Shrine game. He was not invited to the Senior Bowl. Jim Nagy told us that last week. And Jim didn't say that. You know, you could just tell he said we didn't. I, he hasn't really seen him. Um, and then fansided.com in their draft recap said most, quote, most boards had Martin Late day three. And they called him a reach as well at number 96. Now, I have been beating the drum on this show that I wanted a defensive tackle or an edge at some point in this draft. I actually prefer the interior defensive tackle. I wanted somebody in this draft for sure playing that position. Uh, the Lions have Aline McNeil. They've got Levi Onzerike. They've got Josh Pascal. Kaminsky can play inside and outside. Um, um, Isaiah Bugs is also there. So they've got some depth there. But remember during the playoffs last year, I talked about how the teams that were striving, the teams that were playing well, all seem to have these disruptive defensive tackles, whether, whether it's the guys in San Francisco with Armstead and others, whether it's Dexter Lawrence with the Giants, who blew up the Vikings in that playoff game last year, All right? Whether it's Christian Wilkins with the Dolphins, watched him in the, in, the, in the playoffs last year, even though they lost, like just blowing up plays. These are dominant players at the point of attack on the interior. I watch Aleem McNeil, and I see an improved player every year. All right, Isaiah Bugs, good plugger, guy that can play a little bit. Josh Paschal, didn't see enough tape on him this year. But I'm excited about him because immediately when he when he got healthy and played this year, he contributed a little bit. Levi owns Arike, who knows? He's been injured for two years. All right, Kaminsky, like I said, passing down, sometimes lined up inside, sometimes lined up outside, uh, but not a pure defensive tackle or nose tackle or one, two technique, one technique, whatever that crap is. You know what I mean? So Broderick Martin is going to get a chance to play. I just didn't think that was going to be the pick in the third round. There were other defensive tackles more polished, more heavily graded, highly graded, or ranked than Martin. This guy is huge. Question is, does he make enough plays? He had a fumble recovery in the East-West Shrine Bowl, uh, made a couple of tackles in that game, probably helped his cause. Wasn't invited to the Senior Bowl, like I said. Um, but... While we talk about grades, and I thought it was a B, B-plus type of draft for the Lions, the one pick that seemingly everybody says the Lions really reached on is this Martin kid. And we're going to find out if he can play or not. Um, but you look at the depth chart overall on this defense, and it's just so much better. And it's so much deeper than it was when Holmes and Campbell got here two years ago. And even they've now drafted three times. So now it's up to a future head coach, Aaron Glenn, and the rest of the defensive staff to kind of get these guys going. Because the offense is going to be really good. Really good. 
and I'm excited about that. Marvin Jones at the Laker game the other night with Amon Ross St. Brown. They're working out together out in L.A. You love seeing that. You love it. And I think Jameer Gibbs is going to be really good, and they're going to use him a lot of different ways in that passing game. A lot. All right, folks, uh, that's it for a Monday edition of Locked On Lions. We are back again tomorrow. Your team every day.